Alrighty guys, we're back. Part two of the three-part series on myofascial release. Today we'll be covering foam rolling of the upper body. Part one, if you didn't see it yet, make sure you go back, check that out. That was the lower body. We did get a couple questions. First one being what to do if you're feeling a reasonable amount of pain. I think we kind of slightly discussed it, but you really shouldn't be feeling too much pain. A little bit of discomfort, yes. Uh, if you're feeling too much pain, you've got a couple options. One, change your foam roller to something that's a little less dense, not going to put as much pressure on. Second option, keep your foam roller. Rather than rolling the muscle, then just hit an area. Try to put as much pressure on as possible without too much pain. Don't move. Hold it for a few seconds, relax, and then repeat and slightly move and work your way up to actually rolling. So again, today we're covering upper body. Okay, we are going to start with your pecs here, obviously your chest. So we get down on the foam roller, this one a little bit awkward, we're using the kind of very end of the foam roller, rolling along the bottom of the collarbone, your clavicle, um, not keeping too much weight on there, normally reasonable amount of tightness and discomfort due to a lot of our posture problems. So just roll back and forth, obviously do both sides, uh, put an equal amount of pressure on there. Next we're going to move to your lat, in our overhead athletes tend to see a lot of tightness there. So, we keep bringing the arm up overhead, get the lat stretched out, but not tensed. Keep a reasonable amount of weight in your lower body, and then we're rolling from the armpit all the way to the bottom of the lat, kind of right where it's meeting your rib cage. Don't go any lower than that, it's putting a lot of discomfort and pressure on your ribs. Roll back and forth, obviously again, hit both sides. You might notice your throwing side is a little bit more tight um, than your non-throwing side. And take Manny on the ground, and he's gonna start with the thoracic spine, also known as a T-spine. So Manny's gonna place the foam roller underneath his shoulder blades. He's gonna cross his arms so that we round the back. When we're on the upper part of our back, we want it to be rounded so we can hit our lower traps and our rhomboids. From here, he's just gonna roll up and down, kind of pushing out of his heels to move on the foam roller. Now that we've rolled the T-spine, now we're going to do some T-spine extension. So Manny's going to take his hands, place them on top of his shoulders. Don't grab your shoulders. Don't put pressure on, on your shoulders. Just put your hands in that place. Elbows pointed up. From here, he's going to have the foam roller at the bottom of his shoulder blades, and he is just going to extend his back over the foam roller. He's going to make sure his chin stays nice and tucked into his neck the whole time. After he does a couple with the foam roller at the bottom of his shoulder blades, he's going to slide down a little bit so that the foam roller is higher on his back, and he's going to repeat the same process. Excellent. Now let's move on to our low back, also called your erector spinae muscles. From here, he's going to put the foam roller just above his hips, brace his weight on his heels and his hands. Keep your back flat. Do not arch your low back over the foam roller. He's going to slide up and down keeping that back nice and flat, and then maybe even roll a little bit to his right, roll a couple of times, and then he can roll a little bit to his left. That might feel a little bit tighter if it does. Maybe stay in that area a little bit longer. All right, guys, that concludes part two of foam rolling. Um, up next is lacrosse ball. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop by any one of the EM locations or contact us email. <laughs>